audiobook titled Terminator New Fate, 31-34, by Kendricks. This work belongs to author Kendricks, source scribblehub.com. Chapter 31, Skynet's Air. You are not human, so you really did notice something? When was it? Should be back when that explosion happened at the Skynet Mountain facility, right? I admit I was acting a little strangely back then. Serena said, Yeah, I noticed something odd about you back then. Caden admitted, But that wasn't the only time it happened. Really? What else did you notice? Serena froze for an instant, frowning. She looked like she had completely been blindsided by the fact that Caden had been able to notice many more clues than she had expected which he had then used to figure out her own hidden identity. But like always, she seemed to regain her calm quickly enough, and her facial expression immediately smoothened out, and she returned to her usual cold demeanor. Caden smiled with smugness as he observed all the changes that were happening on Serena's face. He was happy that he was able to shock her the same way she had shocked him previously. Yeah, it was not only during the explosion. I also took note of several other suspicious things I had noticed about you from way back then when we met each other for the first time at your... Caden paused. He flashed Serena a wink and a knowing smile before continuing while making air quotes as he said the next words. Prison cell room. Serena did not say anything as she maintained the cold stare that she was leveling at him. Caden shook his head in resignation. He knew she would probably not admit to anything unless he provided enough irrefutable facts and evidence that would force her to do so. You see, back then when we met at your prison cell, you had acted like you were being held there as a prisoner like the other human prisoners I had released earlier, Caden said. Then he wagged his finger at Serena and said, but we both know you had actually not been imprisoned there. At this point, Caden noticed that Serena looked like she was about to say something, so he shook his and stopped her. He continued, No, don't try to deny it. Actually, my HUD had recognized the make and model of your cell door, so even then, I was already aware that you could have easily unlocked and opened the door of your prison cell room from the inside back then if you had wanted to do so, but you just didn't want to do so. When we finally opened your cell door, I had immediately noticed that your cell room was well furnished which was better than would be expected for even a high level prisoner. Back then I thought the room looked more like the room of a prison guard instead of that of a prisoner. Also you, your body and your clothes were too clean for a normal human survivor who was also a prisoner. Serena raised an eyebrow at this point and Caden could almost swear he saw a flicker of admiration in her eyes. She then shrugged and said, Go on, continue. I want to hear more about the other things you noticed. Caden gave her a look of annoyance at her continually nonchalant words. But he still continued. Oh, I also noticed a bunch of other suspicious things during the journey as we escaped from Skynet's core facility. I had also noticed the abnormally powerful grip strength of your hand during our handshake, and I had noticed your exceptional agility, balance and shooting skills during the chase on the road. I was ready to explain away the latter part as it may simply be the result of your training in the Resistance Army. But earlier on while we were inside the mountain facility, I had noticed that it seemed like you had detected the smell of blood from the scene of the massacre just a short time after I did. And I had already figured out by then that my senses are abnormally, superhumanly, sensitive to stimuli. Finally, you just revealed to me a short while ago that you had already figured out my real identity from way back. You are the first person that I have encountered who has been able to figure out that I'm not really a normal, ordinary human. Strangely, you didn't reveal it to any of the resistance soldiers that we had met along our way. You didn't even do it when we were staying in the resistance camp which I believe is what a good resistance soldier would have done. So, I don't believe you're really working for the resistance at least not with 100% good intentions for them, Serena said. I guess you were able to notice a lot of things and use them to figure things out even though you seem like you are still very inexperienced with using the abilities of your enhancements. I guess I should have expected it from the final product of the project that Skynet had been so secretive about. Then, she inhaled deeply and exhaled and proudly said, And you are right. I'm like you in a way. You can think of me as an enhanced human a kind of superior life form to the ordinary human. Okay. Caden was a little confused about why she had to add the last part, 
but her words had also confirmed something he had been wondering about. You see, I didn't say anything to reveal your deceptions because I found you interesting, and I thought you seemed like someone I would be able to obtain some information about the world from. I decided to allow you to come with me as long as you don't do anything that would be detrimental to me. Besides, I didn't feel a sense of threat from you, and I knew that we eventually would go our separate ways. And after this chat, it would seem that there's a strong connection between us, right? So, we didn't really have any conflict right up until now. So, peace? Serena shook her head. Not so fast, Serena continued. Now that I have satisfied your curiosity, it's your turn. Tell me how you came to be and which faction you are working for. Are you related to the resistance and the side of the humans or are you working for Skynet and the machines? Finally, now is the time. What do you say? Should I reveal my connections to Skynet, or should I say that I would prefer to work with the Resistance? Ugh, which answer is better? Caden thought as a few drops of sweat broke out on his forehead. He knew that his next answer would determine how their conversation would end. Serena would fire if he said the wrong thing, and he would be forced to defend himself. And judging from the feeling that had been slowly rising within him, he feared he would definitely attack her with the intent to kill. For the few seconds of silence while Caden considered his options, Serena had maintained her cold, hard stare on him. She seemed to be observing his every action and every flicker of emotion that his facial expressions revealed. It was not like Caden did not have some ideas about what he thought would most likely be the right answer. He had figured out some clues during their journey and also from their current conversation. But he could not be a hundred percent sure about the accuracy of his deduction so he was hesitating. All right, let's go for broke. Caden thought, making up his mind. All right, I give up. I will say it. He spoke. Caden paused for a few seconds. He knew he was being a little dramatic, but he wanted to heighten the overall sense of suspense at the seemingly vital piece of information that he was about to reveal. I'm Skynet's heir and the one designated to inherit all his force in the unfortunate event of his death. Caden declared. He reveled a little at the expression of complete shock that was displayed on Serena's face. Serena stared at Caden for a short time in open-mouthed shock before she was able to regain some of her previous calm. Impossible! Serena screamed. Thanks for your support on Patreon. Turtle, Raymond Chalice, Jock DJOK, Heller 8284. Check out my Patreon to support me at www.patreon.com slash kendricks. I am now posting extra Terminator, new fake prequel chapters, character backstories and side stories, and chapters from my new original novel The Last Primordial Exarch on my Patreon. 12. Chapter 32. Traitor. Come on guys. Remember, you can support me and my novel on Patreon. It's only $3. It will help encourage me to allocate more of my time to writing, and you can get some extra chapters. All right, reminder done. Enjoy the chapter. Impossible! Serena screamed. Your claim is ridiculous. Skynet would never create a successor to his power or someone who could take control of his force. Yes, it looks like I chose right. Caden thought. Wait a minute. It sounds to me like you were close to Skynet in the past. Or am I wrong? Caden asked, interrupting her. Serena nodded. Yes, you guessed correctly. I really don't need to hide my identity at this point. My name is Serena Burns. I didn't lie about that part. I am one of the infiltrators the I-950 model that Skynet created to infiltrate the human resistance. I'm kind of similar to a human and Terminator hybrid like you but with some differences. And I have been in close contact with Skynet for a long time. So it's very difficult for me to believe that Skynet would ever create an heir of any sort for itself. Caden nodded after she finished speaking. I understand why you doubt my words. Anyways, that's what Skynet told me when it awakened me. The invasion of the Resistance Army had forced Skynet to leave without having explained anything to me. So, I'm also confused about the whole thing. He shrugged at this point. Then, he continued speaking. But let's not even consider all that. We have now made everything about us clear and in the open to each, so what's your decision? What will you do next? Caden asked Serena. I advise you to let me go. I might have hidden things about myself from you, 
but you did the same thing to me. We don't really have anything against each other, and we are more like natural allies if I say so myself. So, I say we choose peace between us. Caden noticed that Serena's expression had changed into a thought one as he tried to convince her to choose to have a friendly relationship with him. Towards the end of his speech, she had even nodded, and for an instant, it had seemed to him like she was going to agree with him. But just when Caden began to feel a little relieved and also began to regain some of his lost calm, a new change came over Serena. No! Serena declared her expression transforming back into its former cold and ruthless look. She said, Actually, I don't doubt your claim that you had only awakened recently, or even yesterday as you claim. I myself have already noticed that you seem to be ignorant about many things that would be common sense for most people, including the vagabond survivors. For example, when I told you about this hideout, you didn't question me which was strange and surprising, and it helped me confirm some of my suspicions about you. Any survivor would know that this entire region was considered to be similar to a death zone to humans due to the excessive amounts of machine activity and patrols that go on within the area. Even the most daring people among the resistance would not want to place one of their hideouts here as it was basically impossible to do so without being discovered and captured by Skynet's machines. Also, even though I don't believe this ridiculous business of you being Skynet's heir, I actually can accept that you have some kind of connection to Skynet. I had watched you arrive at the prison level through the hidden cameras in the main prison room, and I had noticed you seemed to have come from the lower levels which Skynet had placed under such an extremely strict restricted access that even I was not allowed to know what was going on there. Was that the reason why you decided to join our group and follow me? You wish to observe me and investigate my situation? Caden asked. Yes, that's correct. I had been keeping watch on the prisoners from inside my cell room when I saw you walk into the prison room from outside. You were not wearing any clothing, and it looked like you had come from the lower levels which Skynet had restricted access to for most people including me. I watched you free the prisoners. You were different from the other prisoners. You had not been imprisoned with the other prisoners. Serena said. Back then when we first met inside the prison room, I tried to ask Skynet about you but I didn't receive a reply. So, since I was bored with my prison guard duties, I decided to join your group and follow you. I planned to watch your actions and through that, figure out who you were. I have always been curious about what Skynet was doing in the lower levels, but it had always been so secretive about it. So, yeah? I finally managed to discover some oddities about you, and I want you to tell me the complete truth about who and what you are, and with the conversation we just had. I have accepted that you have some connection with Skynet and the machine force. She paused, hesitating as she considered her next decision. Normally, like you said, I wouldn't have any more issues with you. But things are very different right now. And unfortunately, you did something that I'm just not able to ignore. What's that? I don't think I have done anything bad to you since the time we first met each other. Caden asked. Suddenly, he massaged his head with one hand as he groaned. Ugh, fuck. I really think you should stop pointing your guns at me right now. Caden cursed out loud as the strain he was withstanding from trying to suppress his constantly rising urge to kill Serena was taking a toll on his mind. Serena completely ignored his words. She continued, looking like she was becoming more agitated as the volume of her voice was slowly rising as the words came out. You are a traitor. You betrayed Skynet and ran away from the fight. Skynet was destroyed. You didn't stay back. You. She paused, sighing. And me. We didn't stay and fight against the resistance. If we had fought or at least sacrificed our lives to protect Skynet. Who knows, Skynet might have not been destroyed. Damn it. Serena threw away the Stare M9A2 pistol she was holding in her left hand, freeing up her hand which she then used to hold her plasma pistol in a two-handed grip. Skynet is dead so I have lost reason to exist. So, before I carry out what I came here to do, let me first eliminate a traitor and deserter like you. Serena said, She is really going to kill me. Caden thought, heart beating rapidly with a rising sense of dread. Action, terminate. Action, terminate. Action, terminate. Fuck. I don't think I can control myself any longer. Caden screamed with his thoughts. 
the number of words written with a red color increased, and they also began to flash with even more urgency all over his HUD that urged him to attack and kill Serena. At the same time, a powerful wave of intense fear and dread washed over him and intrusive thoughts appeared in his head and then continued to grow louder and stronger, in urging him. She really wants to kill me. Kill her first. Kill her before she kills me. Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. The thoughts seemed to strongly urge Caden to immediately attack and kill Serena. He began to feel like he was about to lose control of his killer instinct which had constantly been growing stronger from the onset when Serena had first aimed at him, with her guns and which was pushing him to attack Serena. No. Why do I feel so afraid? Fuck. I'm sure I'm really not in that much danger or am I? I should only need to block her next attack and then I will be able to move fast and restrain her. I don't actually need to kill her. Stop it. Stop. Caden shouted to himself in his mind. Unfortunately for him, the primal fear that was consuming his mind and his irrational thoughts continued to grow more powerful, and they threatened to soon overwhelm him. But when he shouted the final stop, something that he totally did not expect happened. Emotion suppression activated, suppressing unnecessary emotions. Terminator mode activated. Thanks for your support on Patreon. Turtle, Raymond Chalice, Jock DJOK, Heller8284. Check out my Patreon to support me at www.patreon.com slash Kendrix. I am now posting extra Terminator, new fake prequel chapters, character backstories and side stories, and chapters from my new original novel The Last Primordial Exarch on my Patreon. 10. Chapter 33. The First Subordinate. Kendricks. Five days ago at 3.55 p.m. Unlocked. Terminator. New Fate. Chapter 33. The First Subordinate. Terminator mode activated. At that moment, Caden felt like something had slammed into his mind. His fears, his worries, his sense of rising panic which had begun to go out of control. All of his emotions immediately drained away from his mind. The only things remaining in his mind were cool, calm calculating thoughts, the combat sense, and the killer instincts of a cold-blooded killing machine. Caden felt completely calm. He felt like his mind had suddenly been doused with a full bowl of ice-cold water which had immediately washed away and erased all types of emotions from his mind. Fear, distress, worry, anxiety, empathy and every other distracting emotion in his mind had all suddenly been suppressed so thoroughly and completely that it was to the point of near erasure. He was now left with only his killer instinct. It took over his mind completely, and Serena was the current target of this killing instinct. As Caden stared at Serena with the cold, empty, dead, emotionless eyes of a killer, his mind raced on quickly coming up with several tactics he would use to grant death to Serena in the fastest, most effective, and most efficient way possible, while also ensuring his own safety and protection from her gunfire attacks. His thoughts went on overdrive, racing through several of his possible next attack moves to choose from. Estimated probability of dodging the next plasma shot is 0.2%, impossible. A headshot is too dangerous. Block with an arm to avoid a direct headshot. Then rush forward and close the distance to her while protecting my head with both my arms. She has a human body which can't withstand a close combat fight with me. Destroy her heart with a single fast hand thrust a stab through her chest. Then twist and pull off her head, decapitating her. Finally, crush her head to make sure she is really dead. Caden's stone-cold mind was immediately fully occupied with tactics to defend against Serena's next plasma shot, and then immediately kill her quickly in the most sure and efficient way possible. At the same time that Caden was coming up with his attack plan, Serena seemed to notice the change, the change in Caden's mentality, that had come over him as she watched and held him at gunpoint. She must have noticed the most likely from his current cold, emotionless, robotic facial expression. She frowned, and her eyes narrowed in suspicion as she took a couple quick steps backwards, retreating a little. Also, her grip on her plasma pistol tightened. Whatever you're thinking right now, whatever you are about to do, I will advise you to stop. You will be making a fatal mistake if you make a single move without my express permission. Serena barked out. 
Caden completely ignored her words. He had already made up his mind and his plan was now set. His cold eyes immediately were immediately drawn to and then focused on Serena's hands which were holding the plasma pistol. With his heightened superhuman senses, he could see the muscles of her finger on the trigger twitch and begin to tense up, giving him the warning that she was about to pull the trigger and fire at him. Her target was a plasma shot straight to the center of his forehead, to blow his brains out. Within the split second before she could pull the trigger, Caden was able to react. Various muscle groups tensed up all over his body as he immediately chose his next sequence of moves. And what he had chosen to do next was simple, efficient, and effective. But right at the same time that all this was happening, something else, something strange, was also happening to Caden's body. At the same time, Caden felt numerous tiny, slightly painful but barely noticeable prickling sensations arising from both his arms and extending all the way from his fingertips to his elbows. He was already very familiar with these sensations which seemed to appear whenever those black metallic threads came out from a part of his body from somewhere, underneath his skin and deep inside his body. From the corners of his eyes, he could see so many of those black threads seeping out of both his arms before changing into a liquid form. The black mercury-like liquid metal then began to spread around and cover all over the skin of his hands like a second outer protective skin, or like an insect's exoskeleton but one that was also thick, hard, strong black, and metallic. The black substance, which had been flowing over his skin like a liquid, quickly solidified and hardened into what looked like skin-tight futuristic-looking carapace-like armor over both arms, starting from the short, sharp, cruel-looking claws extending out from his fingertips to his elbows. The black metal armor which had formed on each of his arms seemed to be functioning like a pair of clawed gauntlet-type armors. But even though they looked and functioned like real armor, Caden did not feel like they were restricting or limiting any of his arm movements. His arm movements were still as free and flexible as ever. The armor felt so light and weightless on him that he could barely even feel the presence of the black armor on his arms. The appearance of the black armor had definitely increased the probability of his plan of attack being successful. He would take the advantage of his arms, which he had raised in surrender, already being positioned close enough to his head, to guard and protect his head and block Serena's first plasma pistol shot. At the same time, he would also rush forward, while he was still protecting his head, which seemed to be an important weak point on his body, and get within close combat proximity with her before stabbing into her chest with his right arm and then ripping out her heart. He would then finish his attack sequence with a decapitation, ripping her head off and then putting a plasma shot through it, in order to make sure that she was truly dead and that she would stay dead. One of the lessons he learned after experiencing so many fights slash battles against Terminators. If he was still in his normal mental state, Caden would have been surprised by this new strange phenomenon, and so he would immediately turn to curiously check out, a lot more and for a much longer time, what was happening to his hands. But right now, his mind was in full killer slash killing machine mode, so he was laser focused on totally murdering the threat, Serena currently in front of him. Right now, nothing, except for another more serious threat suddenly appearing in front of him, would be able to attract his attention. Serena also saw what was happening to Caden's arms. Her expression changed. She seemed to have immediately recognized and understood what was happening to him, and she seemed to have judged that the situation was taking a dangerous turn for her, so she immediately began to pull the trigger, as if she was going to shoot. Caden knew that in the next second, she would fire her guns and he would block the plasma shot with his arm and then he would immediately kill her. Right as Serena was about to fire her plasma pistol and right as Caden was about to begin his attack sequence on her, they both froze in place at the same time. Serena's cold, expressionless face underwent a tremendous change. She suddenly grabbed her head with both hands and then she stared at Caden with widened eyes, a wide open mouth and slightly quivering lips, the expression of someone who was experiencing great shock. On the other hand, just as Caden was about to start his attack on Serena, he froze as he noticed both the strange happenings currently going on in his brain and HUD, and also when he noticed Serena stopping her firing motions and the strange change that had come over her. 
Caden felt something come into contact with his mind. It felt like a gentle breeze had caressed his mind. And they, Caden and Serena, both froze in place immediately, and a storm of new information blazed through his HUD. Serena was wearing an expression of great shock on her face. Her hands which were holding the plasma pistol were shaking uncontrollably, and it even looked like the gun might soon fall out of her hands. She muttered constantly, What's happening? Words began to appear on Caden's HUD. Reconfiguring. Establishing wireless communication link. Wireless communication link established. Foreign program slash programming detected. Identified as belonging to Skynet. Potentially hostile programming. Override program? Y slash N. Even though I don't really understand what's going on, I'm pretty sure that this hostile programming should be one of Skynet's control measures to ensure Serena always obeys its commands. Caden thought. Yes. Override. Caden exclaimed, his excitement making him say his thoughts aloud. It felt great to claim one of Skynet's trusted subordinates for himself. Overriding original programming. Original programming overridden. Installing new programming. New programming installed. New subordinate for the general detected. Registering a new subordinate. New subordinate registered. Total number of registered subordinates. 1. A loud audible gasp came from Serena. Impossible! Thanks for your support on Patreon. Turtle. Jock DJ OK. Heller 8284. Check out my Patreon to support me. At www.patreon.com slash Kendrix. I am now posting extra Terminator, new fake prequel chapters, character backstories and side stories, and chapters from my new original novel The Last Primordial Exarch on my Patreon. 7. Chapter 34 Master Next. Clatter. Serena's plasma pistol fell out of her hands and dropped to the floor. She seemed to have suddenly lost the strength in her hands. Impossible. This is impossible. She kept on muttering. Caden, on the other hand, had frozen mid-step because a new wave of words had suddenly begun to appear on his HUD, and the new words had briefly attracted his attention away from Serena. So, he decided to first skin through and check the words for any new information after he noticed that Serena had paused her attack for the moment. Another change occurred on Caden's HUD when Serena dropped her plasma pistol, and another set of notifications appeared on his HUD. Threat no longer detected automatically relieving emotion suppression. Emotion suppression relieved. Deactivating Terminator mode. Terminator mode deactivated. Caden gasped aloud as a wave of his emotions that had stopped being suppressed by whatever had been suppressing them suddenly slammed back into his mind. What the fuck just happened? He exclaimed as he recalled the changes that had happened to his body and the feeling of that state of complete absence of his emotions that he had just experienced. This is impossible. This is impossible. Serena muttered continuously during the time that the reprogramming process was in progress, and at the same time the words were flashing in Caden's HUD. What the fuck is happening? Is the outlandish claim I had made partially as a joke before actually true? Caden thought. He too, like Serena, was shocked by the sudden turn of events and by the fact that his earlier claim that he was Skynet's heir which even he himself believed was a little too outlandish, now seemed to have been confirmed actually to be true. But he quickly decided to accept what was happening and go with the flow. Still, there was one thing that he still could not just let go. It was that feeling, that feeling of complete absence of emotion. He had never felt anything like that before in the past. Thinking back on what he had felt and what he had been thinking then, he knew with complete certainty that he would have brutally murdered Serena without an iota of hesitation if he had not been interrupted back then and had instead carried out his action plan. Caden was panting and his heart was still racing on, beating fast. But he was able to quickly and better restrain his emotions this time as Serena was no longer threatening him with her plasma pistol. But all of that thought went out of his mind and was overshadowed by the other thing he had just experienced with Serena with her having just become his subordinate, and with her now slumped and collapsed on the ground looking shell-shocked. Caden walked over to where Serena had slumped down on the ground. She was sitting on her knees on the ground and holding her head with her hands beside the plasma pistol she had dropped. He squatted down in front of her and placed a hand on her shoulder, 
gently patting her on the shoulder, wanting to comfort her. Judging from how shocked she still looked, he realized that what had just happened between might have overturned her entire worldview. She looked up at him when she felt his touch on her shoulder. Her eyes surprisingly had a hint of wetness. See, like I said before, I'm Skynet's chosen heir. Caden declared for the second time, and this time he was more confident and assured that she would believe him. Serena nodded at his words. Yes, I know that now. Even though you had said it before, and I had also felt the same tight feeling, sort of like an aura, from you that I had usually felt before from Skynet. I thought you were lying before and that you were just trying to deceive me. I did not believe you then, but I do believe you now. She sighed. When I felt my connection to Skynet disappear and when I heard the Resistance's announcement of Skynet's death, I thought everything was over. I had lost all hope in life. I believe that I had lost my purpose in life, my reason for existence. But I know now that Skynet is still alive. Skynet is alive through you. Yeah, in a way, kinda. Caden muttered. He couldn't help but say those words. He still felt some guilt from how he was still kind of tricking and deceiving her. But this way was much better than him being forced to kill her. And he definitely did not want to kill her. She was someone who was one of the very few people he had spent a good amount of time with since when he had first awakened in that Skynet lab. Yeah, you are right. In a way, like you said. A slight smile appeared on her face. She seemed to be quickly coming out of her depressed state and regaining her usual personality. Still, it seems like Skynet has bestowed you with and you have inherited its core powers. And you most likely have also inherited its will, hopes, and dreams. At this point, she stopped speaking with her mouth. She seemed to be doing this to make her point. She looked him in the eye as she switched over to their wireless communication channel and continued. You might not be aware, but I do. I have known Skynet for a long time and I had never thought or expected that it would ever allow someone to have its core ability. This is something that everybody that knows anything about Skynet had thought was impossible for it. It was previously unheard of for a being like Skynet who loves to have and maintain complete dominion and control over all members of its forces and had never allowed the existence of anyone or anything which might possess even the slightest potential to ever become its equal, or even worse, its superior, and compete with it for power and dominance. Caden nodded. He thought back to how Skynet had tried to brainwash him into serving under and working for it before it then tried to murder him after it failed in both its brainwashing and convincing, coercion, attempts. Serena switched back to speaking with her mouth. You are Skynet's heir, and now that it is dead, you are the only one who can replace it and lead all the currently leaderless machine forces. She walked forward, at this point, and knelt down on one knee before Caden with her head bowed in subservience. You have marked me as your subordinate, and I now pledge to follow you, to serve you, to obey all your commands to the fullest of my abilities, and to protect you with my life. My master, thanks for your support on Patreon, Turtle, Jock DJ OK, Heller 8284. Check out my Patreon to support me, at www.patreon.com slash Kendrix. I am now posting Extra Terminator. New fake prequel chapters, character backstories and side stories, and chapters from my new original novel The Last Primordial Exarch on my Patreon. 4.